Hey everybody, Elijah with Righteous River Fishing in Oregon and you remember that Pacific Coast Outdoors steelhead kit I just showed you on that demo? I promised you I was gonna show you how to tie up a basic rig for steelhead and uh, I think it's a perfect time. So I'm out here on the water actually, I'm doing a little bit of plonking. I've got my rod in there, I just caught a nice trout. Uh, you know, that's all I'm expecting to bite but I figured if I'm gonna film this video, uh, I'm gonna be out here on the water and it's snowing. What's up, it's so cool. So anyways, um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take you through the basics of just how to tie up a, sing a float setup for steelhead, one of your basic setups. And this kit I highlighted is real money. Like half, it's a half ounce float, it gives you the bobber stops, it gives you uh, the weights, uh, and it gives you beads, worms, and jigs, lots of different options to fish for steelhead. All you really need besides that is some line and you know whatever, your scissors. So here we go, um, I'm going to, I have this salmon drift rod set up here. I'm gonna peel off this setup, cut it off. I'll be right back. And I'm gonna start just with braid, like you'd have 40 pound braid, and I'm gonna tie on a setup. So here's how you uh, tie up a setup and fish for steelhead. Let's go. Okay, so here's what we got here. Uh, we have 40 pound braid. This is coming right from the spool, right off the rod, okay? And we need to get our half ounce weight. So this kit comes with two half ounce weights, but it also comes with bobber stops and beads. So you need one bobber stop and one bead for the top of this, all right? So very first thing you need is your bobber stop. Don't lose that bead, There's, those beads are really st small. And it's good to have actually a color that contrasts the color of your line. I have um, addicted orange 40 pound braid, and this is a neon yellow line, so that's actually a perfect match. So I'm gonna slide that on take out the sleeve that holds it on there and I'm gonna cinch these knots up. There's basically two knots, okay? And you can use, there's rubber bobber stops I use all the time too, um, but something about these um, rope ones are really nice. They're just old school, right? Oh yeah, and it's nice and grippy, okay. So, here's the thing. You don't wanna cut your bobber stop lines completely off. Leave like an inch on each side so that if it gets loose, you can actually re-tighten it, because that can happen. If your knots get a little loose, you need to retie that, okay? So that's the first step. Bobber stop, okay? Now, the kit comes with a small bead. You always want to carry with you a little assortment of beads. Um, that bead, what it does is actually, <clears throat> the bead stops on that knot and the bead is not supposed to go through your end eyelet, but this one's really small, it actually might go through it. Now, you don't have to do this extra step, but I like to do it. I like to put a big fat corky on the top of this. It's kind of like a dummy, it's like a dummy indicator to know if your float is floating properly. You don't have to do it. Um, I used to not do it because I was like, I don't need that. But you know what? It's, it's, it gives you extra indication. If you happen to be running like a heavy setup and your bobber's like barely showing. I hate that. I want to be able to see it. So that extra uh, corky gives you extra flotation. So the corky gives you extra flotation, but visibility as well. Now I have huge ones. I could use this huge one. I'm kind of tempted. But I'm just gonna put a yellow one on top, a medium size. But again, have some beads with you. Beads come in very handy when you're trying to set up bobber fishing. All right, so now I'm gonna put that corky on. The optional corky. Okay, now it's time for my bobber. Got a half ounce PCO Pacific Coast Outdoors bobber. Let's go. Hopefully this slides through easy. I hate bobbers that have a, like, the, the hole for the line's too tight. You barely get it through. This one's okay. Okay, there we go, half ounce. I actually like to um, put another small bead down here, so I'm gonna get one more small bead. Okay, now the optional small bead. That really just kind of protects the knot that goes against your weight. Okay, now this kit comes with different size um, weights on it. So you always wanna balance out your float, okay? So this is a half ounce float, so ideally I would use a 
half ounce weight right here. However, if I wanna run a heavy like quarter ounce jig, then I might wanna down that to three eighths or quarter ounce. You just gotta play with it a little bit. I should clean that. Um, but find the weight that makes everything balance out. For this purpose, I'm gonna fish a jig. So I'm gonna put a three eighths ounce weight on here. And then that's gonna give me another eighth ounce for my jig, okay? Okay, this is the time to brush up on your knots. Every time I use braid, I use a polymer knot. So you basically just loop it over so it's double. Put it through whatever you're putting, tying it onto. Do a regular overhand knot, simple, simple. But before you tighten it up, you take that loop and you take whatever you're tying it to and run it through that loop, cinch everything up. Polymer knot. Every time you use braid, this is the strongest knot. It's simple, so easy to learn. It's, one, it's the easiest knot I've ever tied in my life. Boom. Now what you have here is, you've got your bobber stop, your small bead, corky, half ounce weight, small, another small bead to protect the knot. Now you've got your uh, 3 8 ounce weight. Now all you need is put on what you're gonna fish. Obviously I showed you that this kit has jigs, has worms, and it has beads. But I'm gonna go with a jig. We're gonna go with a nightmare pattern, a small nightmare pattern jig, just because I think this water looks real good for that. I'm gonna use 10 pound fluorocarbon line. It's pretty transparent. And your leader length can vary on how you're fishing. But my standard leader length is roughly about three feet. I'd say this might be two and a half feet. But doesn't matter what you tie it to first. Can't remember the name of the knot that I use for fishing. I think it's, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, I guess. I don't know why I'm getting it wet. I'm standing in the snow. It's already wet out here. <laughs> Seven times. Oops. Back through the loop. Cinch it up. This light line. Light line. Okay. Leave a little bit of a tag end. Now I go to my jig. I should have this running. Yeah, that's it. We're ready to fish. So that's it. That's that is your basic setup, steelhead setup. 40 pound braid, bobber knot, small bead, corky, half ounce weight, uh, inline weight, leader, 10 pound fluorocarbon, about two and a half feet long, and you got your little nightmare jig from Pacific Coast Outdoors. That actually looks really sick. I like that jig today. Um, and then the only difference you're gonna make is if you fish the worm and jig, same setup. Just make sure to balance out your weights. And then if you're fishing a bead, you don't need that extra weight or let to lighten the weight. If you're fishing a bead with a half ounce weight, use or half ounce float, use a half ounce weight. Okay. Use a longer leader, maybe four feet, to your bead. And that's the only difference that you have to make. So that's the kit here from Pacific Coast Outdoors. It's snowing. It feels great. I'm not cold. And um, the last test, you got to throw it in the water. You got to make sure it all balances out. If you're at home and you're not on the water, what I like to do is actually I'll just fill up like a bucket or a, uh, like a pitcher and I'll tighten up my uh, setup and I'll float it in there and see how it floats. So, well, let's find out. Let's see how it looks. Let's give it a test real quick. Is the float buried or is there still visible float? Oh yeah. That float can handle another eighth ounce of weight without causing how it uh, looks at all. So we're good to go. Yeah, the float looks good. The setup's good, so we're good to go. Thanks for watching. Man, that could have been a big fish too. There's no way to know, but my bobber disappeared.
with a vengeance. Man, that sucks. Ooh, might have got a bite. Might just have a bite. Oh, was that me or was that a bite? Oh, fish on. Fish on. Oh, I got a good one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, fish on. Here we go. Here we go. What do we got? It's kind of heavy. Whoa. What do we got? Okay. It's kind of heavy. Let's see if we can get it in the net here. It's decent and heavy. Come on, whoa, it's fighting. Oh, wow. 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 Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, jeez. That's a beaut. Oh. Whoa. Oh, that jig is right through its lip, like picture perfect, okay? Whoa, that's a fat one. Ooh. Folks. Really like that fish. You see that mouth? Let's get a nice picture before we let it go. That's a really, really studly fish. I'd say that's about uh, 18 inches long. You ready? Let's let it go. You guys ready? Come on, buddy. Let's do it. You provided me an awesome fight, bro. Okay. <laughs> That was great.